I was asked by Jerry's Artorama, a national art supplies distributor, to do a self-portrait for their 2013 catalog. They wanted it in six different media. I did these sketches, then finally settled on this one and these media, then did a photo session. Not too much flash there. There we go, that's a little better. So that's me standing in my studio. I then took that image, divided it up into the various sections, blew it up on my copy machine so it looked like this, and then went and made my own carbon paper. You know this trick, put charcoal on the back, then turn it over and trace it with a ballpoint pen. When I was done, a little dirty, but I can see it, that'll do. I then took a water-soluble pencil, brown, and traced the image so that I could then take a kneaded eraser and clean it up. There we go, ready to get going. The next thing I did was do gesso on the three sections of the self-portrait that were going to receive traditional paint, oil paint, acrylic. Translucent gesso, of course, so I could still see the image through it. I then began to zero in on the watercolor section. A ah, little bit of help from my one-year-old grandson, Izzy, there. I did the watercolor section first of all in browns, sepia tones, and then came back and did realistic color. I wanted it to be realistic enough to be impressive, yet free enough to look like a real watercolor. Now the oil painting section, the very top of the painting, I did first of all with an acrylic verdigris or grise paint. Greenish gray applied uh, to, to get just the values I wanted. Then I came back and did the same thing with oils. Got it more refined till it's essentially a black and white photograph with a slight green tint. Then I broke out my portrait oil painting kit, one roll of flesh tones, one roll of blush, and began to apply very thin layers, glazes of flesh tone. There's the finished product pretty believable flesh tones in oil. The next section is water soluble oil and I decided for this section to use what I call my Rembrandt palette on the flesh. Warm browns, earth tones building up to be very vibrant. The acrylic section we wanted to be very colorful so I did layers of transparent acrylic and then finished with little bits of opaque acrylic here and there. This section is one of my favorite. When I was an illustrator for many years this was my signature technique pen and ink with airbrush on top. And it's not really ink, it's actually airbrush acrylic paint in the pens, all different colors, building up layer and layer and layer of cross-hatching, develop this, developing this delightful, uh, tech, this delightful texture and getting just the colors that I want. Then when the pen and ink section was finished, I made several xerographic copies of it and then began to cut out the copies so that they could be essentially handheld masks. There I am getting the airbrush ready to go, hold the mask in place and paint around it. You see that? When the airbrushing was done I could do just a little bit of touch up with an X-Acto knife and an eraser and even a little bit of uh, colored pencil, Prismacolor. Here. Now this section was a lot of fun. It's going to be pastel, but I did the underpainting in acrylics. Bright colors, mostly complementary to the color that it's going to, that's going to be on top of it. Then when that dried, did a transparent gesso with t texture in it so that it would take up, pick up the pastel. Here's the pastel on top of the acrylic colors. You see here's the final image, so that flesh tone with little bits of green coming through really makes for an interesting sparkle. Our eyes just love that kind of uh, teasing. Here's the finished portrait. Hope you like it. Thanks for watching. Leave a comment or subscribe. I hope to be back to you soon.